brothers and sisters in the faith um, and uh, their fondest hopes that uh, your Lent, Lenten season is a blessing to you and that uh, Easter comes about nice and fast so we can celebrate it uh, together. Um, I have the honor and privilege of sharing God's word with you tonight and I look forward uh, to worshiping with you for the next 40 minutes or so. Um, our first hymn tonight is uh, Jesus Grant That Balm and Healing. So God bless your worship as we praise our God's name at this time. gave up everything and suffered in every way possible to win our salvation. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and, and to give his life as a ransom for many. We do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. After that, Jesus poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, tying them with a towel was wrapped around him.
I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Jesus fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. our heads in prayer. Dear Savior, you humbled yourself in every way possible because that was what you needed to do to save us. We thank you for not only doing this, but doing it perfectly. And you did that because your love for us knows no bounds. Lead us to thank and to praise you for this as we gladly, in thanks and praise, follow in your steps, humbly serving you and all those you bring into our lives. In your perfect name, we pray. Amen. <laughs> Passion history lesson for this evening begins from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verse 12. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. 
The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Our response to hearing the word. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Yet you are as grown as the Holy One. We'll continue our worship with the hymn of the evening. We'll sing together, Jesus, Refuge of the Weary. our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's a lot of younger ones in church tonight. And uh, as, as, of, as I get a little older, of indeterminate age, which I'm not about to reveal to you, uh, I, I found that things change as you get older. Um, one thing that I've noticed is the, the whole idea of, uh, of sleep changes. I, I, I don't sleep like I used to. And, and maybe you guys know what that's like. Uh, you know, the, the sleep for six hours, dead to the world, wake up all gross and sweaty sleep. I don't do that anymore. Maybe you guys know what that's like. That changes as you get a little bit older. You know what else changes? Again, you young ones. Uh, the dreaded ritual of the bathroom mirror also changes. You guys, you know what I'm talking about? You, you get up in the morning, you go in your bathroom, 
Maybe you have like those really bright lights in there, like the interrogator lights, so that you can't hide anything when you look at that mirror and you, that mirror shows you what you look like in the morning. And you see the, the, the pillow seam on your cheek, right? Or the, the, the remains of the jewel mark on the other side. And for me, it's always this side that the hair is sticking up. And you know what? That mirror is, is the worst part about that mirror is it doesn't lie to you. I mean, mirrors are not politically correct. They tell you the truth. It might be unpleasant. That's why I, I kind of uh, like the mirrors of Lent idea for your theme this year because we are going to look in the mirror at certain characters, certain people in our Bibles. And we, know, we may not always like what's looking back at us because what's looking back at us is a whole lot of ugliness sometimes. Especially tonight. As looking back at us, uh, we see in that mirror, not you, but we see the face, grizzled face of a Roman soldier. And unfortunately, in the grizzled face of that Roman soldier, we're going to see some things in us that are not going to be pretty. But they're the truth. Our text tonight is from Mark chapter 15. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and they spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe, put his own clothes on him, and then they led him out to crucify him. Thus far the word. So when you look in that mirror tonight and you see that Roman soldier looking back at you, what do we know about that Roman soldier? Number one, professional. Roman soldiers were not uh, weekend warriors. These aren't uh, uh, farmers that put down their pitchfork and, and picked up a spear uh, f for the, uh, some kind of temporary mil militia. These are professional soldiers and usually lifers. These men uh, from Mark 15 probably were, were pretty young. And, and I say that because um, I say that because of their location. You, you, you wouldn't join the army, or you wouldn't become part of the, the legionnaires and say, "Boy, I sure hope I get sent to uh, Palestine." Be like, you know, going to, I don't know, Minnesota or something like that. Some parts of Minnesota. How about that? Because Palestine would have not been your first choice. Hot, sticky, and the people there are crazy, right? Especially on this week with this religious festival that they would have brought in all these extra soldiers from Pilate's in town. Pilate usually was up at Caesarea Philippi, right on the Mediterranean Sea, beach volleyball, uh, cool breezes, um, no, they're stuck in Jerusalem with these people that are just crazy. You suggest that they do something a little different and they go crazy. They go nuts. And this Friday is no different. Friday morning, 5.30 or so, Pilate is in his judgment seat and already, already, you have kind of a half riot going on as the people yell and scream and, and try and pressure Pilate to, to give them what they want. So these soldiers, by this time, say about 8.30 or so in the morning, they weren't in a good mood already. And so what happens, our text, 
is some ugliness. And it's ugliness that the soldiers would have thought as part of their pay. As strange as this sounds to us, the whole idea of taking Jesus aside and doing these horrible things to them, they would have looked at, at this as part of the perks of the job. This is great. We get some time alone with this guy that's made us get up early and, and, and caused us all this extra problems today. And now it's our turn. And you read what they did. As they spit on him, they beat him, they found a, a crown of thorns and, and pounded that into their head. They <clears throat> put a robe around him and mocked him and paid homage to him like he was their king. It, it, just horrible, horrible things. And I'm sure you don't deny that. But I'm sure you might also be thinking, wait a second, uh, Pastor, you, you said we're going to be looking in the mirror here. Well, I can tell you, I, I've never done any of those things. Never spit on Jesus. Never mocked him openly. Never, never, never hit him. Never made fun of him. I, I haven't done any of this, this, My mirror, Pastor Cook, I don't know what's in your mirror, my mirror looks pretty clean compared to those Roman soldiers. Here's the thing, is that our text is very clear that the Roman soldiers did this out, away from the limelight. This is after everything was done. Uh, Pilate, remember, tried to get rid of Jesus, tried to pawn him off on Herod, uh, tried to <coughs> beat Jesus uh, so severely that they would feel bad for Jesus. They had uh, uh, Jesus and Barabbas stand in front like some kind of bizarre auction. Which one do you want? How? Huh? Which one do you want? Pilate has washed his hands of this all. He has sent Jesus to be crucified, and the soldiers take him away from the eyes of the people because they figure now it's our time. And they knew they would not be caught. They knew that this would not be seen. They knew that they could do these things to Jesus and no one would know. How's that mirror looking now? Because I know that in that mirror, as I look back, I see someone that has done things to dishonor Jesus and, and, and mock Jesus by my actions, and I do so in, in such a way so that no one knows about it, so I don't get caught, so then it's like I never did it at all. And that's the, 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 the sad part about all this, those soldiers committing these crimes and thinking that no one's ever going to call them for it. No one, no one, no one is going to punish them. No one's going to scold them. I've done that. Maybe you have too. That's a truly terrible thing about our, our sinful nature. As long as our sinful nature, sinful nature thinks as long as I don't get caught, as long as no one sees me, then it's like it never happened at all. Those mirrors are horrible things, aren't they? And if we're honest with ourselves, they show us what we're really like. But here's the thing about those Roman soldiers. They led him out to crucify him. You know what happens next. As Jesus walks out to Golgotha, barely on his own power, probably held up by a couple of those soldiers. And as they lay Jesus down and stretch out his arms as far as possible, these guys, remember, were the professional, the professional shoulders, soldiers. As they grab those uh, uh, nails to, to pound into Jesus' hands and feet, something amazing happens. And I sure hope those soldiers heard and they took it to heart. Because what was the first word of Jesus while he was being crucified? Father, forgive them. Who's the them? Pilate? Yep. Jewish leaders? I'm sure. Soldiers? 
Definitely. You and me? Oh, yeah. Father, forgive them. Some of them hurt. At least one of them we know responded in faith. Surely this is the Son of God. And maybe that soldier, maybe those soldiers, who had probably committed many crimes against people, against people like Jesus. Maybe those soldiers were used to hearing, how dare you? Maybe they heard curses and words and wishes of vengeance, and instead of hearing that, they hear, Father, forgive them. You see, you and I are used to looking in that mirror and seeing, ugh, looking back at us. But because of what happened on Good Friday, when God looks in that mirror and sees our reflection, he sees perfection. He doesn't see the pillow seam. He doesn't see the, the, the drool mark. He doesn't see how this seems to be higher up and this seems to be coming out. He doesn't see any of those things because he sees a perfect, redeemed child of God. Against all logic and against what we truly deserve. He saw us soldiers forgiven. He saw Pilate forgiven. He sees you and me forgiven, justified, without sin. the best part about looking in that mirror is that we're no longer looking at the mirror that reflects our sin but we're looking at God's mirror God's mirror is different God's mirror is perfect it makes us perfect as such we rejoice we rejoice over these next few weeks as we look at some of those characters from Lent because they're all forgiven too. We rejoice because when we're back here on Easter morning, we're worshiping that same forgiving God who showed that death had no power over him, has no power over us. Rejoice over that mirror because that mirror is a sign of what Jesus has done for you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. We'll continue our worship as we again praise our God, the third verse of Jesus' Refuge of the Weary. join together in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We'll sing uh, the first two verses of all praise to thee, my God, this night.
Can we bow our heads in prayer? Glorious Savior, as we have again been reminded of your perfect humility this evening, help us to lead humble lives of service. And thanks for all you have done. May we always think first about your will and then how we can apply that will and humbly serve our neighbors. Continue to build up our faith that we gladly, willingly do this, serve faithfully until you call us home. In your perfect name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have you heard God's word tonight? Receive now his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We'll close our service as we sing the final hymn of all praise to thee, my God, this night.